Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Generation Tech. Now, seeing as everyone seemed to enjoy our video on the actual size of ships in the Star Wars universe, after listening to your feedback, we've decided to make it a series. So today, we're going to give you some key stats on the ships of the Rebel Alliance. First up, the GR-75 Medium Transport. This is the ship that ends up smashing into the front of a Star Destroyer in Rogue One. Ooh, that's got to be the spaceship equivalent of being kicked in the balls. It also helped the Rebels evacuate Hoth at the beginning of the Empire Strikes Back. The ship is about 90 meters long. That's almost as long as a football field, which is a bit over 100 meters in length. It can carry up to 19,000 metric tons of cargo. That's about the same as a general purpose oil tanker, the smallest of Earth's primitive seafaring oil transport ships. The ship was hardly cutting edge speed-wise. Within an atmosphere, it could travel about 400 miles per hour. That's slower than Earth's feeble airliners such as the 747. To be honest, it's only a little bit faster than this World War II era Spitfire. The ship's hyperdrive rating was class 4. That's also really slow. But what these freighters lacked in speed, they made up for in stealth. The hull was impenetrable to Imperial sensors, and the ship also had sensor jammers which made the ship itself hard to detect. This meant that these freighters could evade Imperial forces when making Rebel supply runs. When the company that made the freighters went bust about three years before the destruction of the first Death Star, the remaining stock of ships made their way into Rebel hands. Thirteen escaped the base on Hoth. That was about half the fleet that was stationed at that base. Next up, we have the CR-90 Corvette manufactured by Corillian Engineering. This Corvette was used as a diplomatic vessel by the Republic Senate and later on the Galactic Senate. It had a relatively large engine block compared to its size. It consisted of 11 ion turbines, giving an impressive amount of thrust. The most famous vessel of this class was the Tanitiv IV, which belonged to the Orderanian representative Leia Organa. Her ship, which famously became known as the Blockade Runner, managed to deliver the Death Star plans to Rebels. These corvettes, despite their civilian design, eventually became the backbone of the Rebel fleet. It's 150 meters long. That's the length of two Airbus A380s. The CR-90 could hold up to 3,000 metric tons, which is roughly the towing capacity of 2,079 V6 EcoBoost Ford F-150s. Did anyone else just picture themselves on a chariot being pulled by a massive pack of pickup trucks? Maybe that was just me. Anyway, the Tantive 4 had a maximum atmospheric speed of 590 miles per hour. That's about the same as a jet airliner. Now let's look at the Nebulon B Escort Frigate. This ship is 300 meters long. That's almost as long as the Eiffel Tower lying on its side. These frigates were built at the Kuat Drive Yards, the same place that built the Imperial Star Destroyers. And that's because they are in fact Imperial ships. But the Rebel Alliance managed to acquire a few of these ships in a coup, and some also defected to the Rebel Alliance with their crews. These powerful ships were armed with 12 laser cannons and 12 turbo lasers. They were often used as escort ships to protect convoys and also as medical frigates. Luke was treated aboard a Nebulon B medical frigate called the Redemption for his injuries after his confrontation with Darth Vader. I am your father. No! No, not just his mental injuries, his actual injuries. No! Yeah, that. Now, moving on to Home 1, the flagship of the Rebel fleet at the Battle of Endor. At 1,200 meters long, it was the largest ship in the Rebel Alliance fleet at that time. It was three times as long as Earth's largest container ship. If it landed in Central Park, it would look something like this. Home 1, an MC-80 Star Cruiser, was built at the Mon Calamari shipyards. The Mon Calamari are an alien race that look kind of like fish. Calamari. Was George Lucas at a Spanish tapas bar when he thought up a name for this species? I don't know. Anyway, probably the most well-known Mon Calamari was Admiral Akbar, who delivered the most iconic line from the Star Wars series. I am your father. No, the most iconic line. It's a trap! Yeah, that one. Admiral Akbar's always there to save you from entering a disastrous situation. I wouldn't turn on that light if I were you. It's a trap! Should've listened to Admiral Akbar, bro. 
Admiral Akbar's ship, Home One, was originally a civilian space exploration vessel. It was later refitted for military purposes, with extra armor around the hull which covered many of the original windows. Although there were multiple species on the ship, the controls were never redesigned for human or other races' hands, so the pilots and other bridge crew had to be Mon Calamari. The atmosphere on the ship was hotter and more humid than humans were used to. Basically, when they were having this meeting, it would have felt like they were in a steam room. Last up, we have the Profoundity, the rebel ship owned by Admiral Radis at the Battle of Scarif in Rogue One. Star Wars writer Pablo Hidalgo joked that they temporarily called the ship the Radisson. This ship was also massive for a rebel ship. Around the same length as Home One, it was the same height as the Empire State Building. The Profoundity was also a Mon Calamari ship, but it had repurposed sublight thrusters from the Kuat drive yards. It was the ship that received the Death Star plans at the end of Rogue One, before they were passed to Princess Lair inside the Tantive IV that was docked inside the Profoundity before it escaped. And the Profoundity was a nice ship. It's a real shame Darth Vader made a bit of a mess in there. Anyway guys, what's your favourite rebel ship? Click the icon in the corner to vote in the poll. Don't forget to subscribe to Generation Tech. Oh, and Alan will be back tomorrow with a video about R2D2's girlfriend or something. See ya!